back to my channel. So I'm switched up the lighting again this time. I have most of it just focused on me and not super overexposed and the background's darker. I don't know. I'm trying all sorts of new things. So let me know what you think. But today is another mini mystery. I asked you guys last time what to call them and almost half of you said mini mystery. So that's what we're going with. So the first one is a missing persons, but it's a little bit different than a lot of the ones that we have spoken about before. And that is the disappearance of 16 year old Amy Yu from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now, Amy did not just vanish really. And they have a good idea of where she might be. It's just about getting her back home safely. Amy Yu was last seen with Kevin Esterly, who is a 45-year-old man. They were seen at 7.09 a.m. on Monday, March 5th, so just a little over a week ago, near North 15th Street and West Allen Street. Amy and Kevin are said to have developed an inappropriate relationship. They met at church, her family became friends with him, he'd been over for family dinners, it was someone that they had trusted, but Unfortunately, things went a little bit awry. Amy's mother dropped her and her brother off at the bus stop that morning, and it's thought that Kevin came and picked her up right after the mother left. She was a student at Lehigh Valley Academy Charter School, and it was recently found out before she disappeared that she had been checked out from school approximately 10 times between November and February and Kevin Esterly was the one checking her out. Amy had actually added him and school paperwork as her stepfather on February 9th, 2018, around a month before she disappeared. Her mother went to the school to pick her up one day to unfortunately discover what I just told you, that Kevin Esterly had already come to pick her up. This was not something she was comfortable with, this was not something that she knew about, and he was banned from school property. And this obviously only made the both of them very angry. Then on the 15th of February, Amy's mother went through her phone and realized there were hundreds upon hundreds of text messages between the two that made her incredibly uncomfortable. And while I don't think there was anything inappropriate enough to charge him with anything, and keep in mind she was 16, that is the age of consent in Pennsylvania, um, there wasn't much she could do. So all the police did do was call him and tell him not to have any sort of contact with Amy again and not go near their residence. The pair are said to be traveling in Esterly's 1999 two-door red Honda Accord and they're believed to be heading south. The license plate is KTL 0529. Well, the couple was spotted at the Philadelphia International Airport by a local resident who says something just didn't seem right about their relationship. For the first time since they disappeared, information has surfaced about the movements of 16-year-old Amy Yu and 45-year-old Kevin Esterly. The couple was spotted at Philadelphia International Airport March 5th boarding a plane to Dallas. Fellow passenger Frank Castrovinci took notice of them when they started asking people to switch seats so they could sit together. I just started thinking, I wonder if he adopted this this young girl. Castro Vinci says you was quiet during the flight and at first Esterly appeared fatherly. But then I saw her leaning on him and uh, yeah, which daughters do but just the way he was rubbing her leg it just did not seem like a father-daughter situation. Police say they believe Esterly's red 1999 Honda was ditched in Philadelphia whether at the airport or in the surrounding area remains to be seen. Now while she is age of consent 16 she is still a minor and she is not legally allowed to leave her parents with an adult unless permission is given. Now to make this even more alarming he withdrew four thousand dollars from his wife's bank account before they left and both of their passports are missing so police fear that they are fleeing to possibly Mexico. I'm just incredibly concerned that she doesn't really understand the decision that she made. And I'm honestly concerned that at some point she's going to kind of realize what she did and realize that that wasn't the best way to approach it. And I'm concerned that at that point, Kevin Esterly is not going to want to take her back. He's not going to want to come back to Pennsylvania. He has charges already against him for interference of custody of a child. It's sometimes a felony, sometimes a misdemeanor, just kind of depending on age, situation, and state. I'm not exactly sure 
what the situation is in Pennsylvania for that. It's very possible that at some point in this journey and situation, she's going to want to come home and he might tell her no. And then this will become technically a hostage situation. Now, this is not something that 100% will happen. This is only speculation. I know that she did leave willingly on her own, but she, again, is a minor. She is 16. It's just a really alarming situation that a 45-year-old man took such advantage of a 16-year-old old girl. It's just scary. So I hope someone's able to find her. This is something that could become an international thing because they might be crossing borders. So please post this wherever you are because at this point no one knows where she is at. No one knows where they're headed. They have a decent amount of cash and passports. They could end up anywhere. Amy Yu is 4'11", weighs about 90 pounds. I am not sure what exactly she was last seen wearing. She has dark hair, dark eyes, and pure ears. Kevin is 5'9 and 185 pounds. Again, I'm not sure exactly what he was wearing when he was last seen, but he does have dark hair and glasses. So the next mini case is Ryan Stuka, and you guys have suggested this so many times times. I've received so many emails. You guys have tagged me in a ton of different posters of his all over different forms of social media. And when I read a little bit more into the situation, I figured I had to create a video for this and help kind of spread some sort of awareness and give my personal thoughts on it. Ryan is 20 years old. He was last seen leaving a party in the early morning hours of February 17th, 2018. So he's not even been gone for a full month yet. I think while I'm filming this, this might go up after the 17th, I'm not sure, but he's only been gone for around one month. He lives in Beaumont, Alberta, Canada, but he had just moved in December to work at Sun Peaks Ski Resort, which I think is in Kamloops. I think I'm pronouncing that right. On Saturday, February 16th, Ryan and his roommates decided to go out to a bar for a while, and after they left, they decided to go to a house on Burfield Drive. Now, I've personally looked at a map. Burfield Drive is, according to locals, where a lot of people that own homes live, and it's also where a lot of the different resort employees live temporarily. So it's not necessarily a huge touristy part of the area, it's more just people who live there. Now the home was only a five minute walk from their apartment and I'm fairly certain I figured out what apartments he lived at as well. It should have been a straight shot home. Sometime between 1 and 2 a.m. his friends decided that they were going to go ahead and head home and for some reason, I don't know if it was drinking or what what exactly all the friends decided to leave and never really made sure Ryan was behind them. Now Ryan never made it home, he didn't show up for work the next day, and all of the social media and his phone have been completely silent since around that time on the 17th. The friends are claiming that they left and they thought he got up as well and started to put on his jacket and why they didn't wait again I'm not sure and they started heading out the door. They assumed he was throwing his shoes on and he would be behind them. He never showed up. They didn't call police or anything. They figured he might have just drank a little too much. Maybe he just decided to stay the night where he was. So again, no alarms were raised until the next morning when he never showed up for work. While the entire party has been questioned, apparently according to the mother and some things police have said. They don't feel like they really got the full story. They can't get their timeline 100% down right. This doesn't at all mean the friends are guilty of anything, but that is just something that I wanted to kind of throw out there because we've seen a lot of these situations where friends have been drinking, friends left another friend behind, and bad things happen. Police are asking residents in the area to check any outbuildings that they have, sheds, garages, any abandoned vehicles. If he had been drinking, drinking and no one really knows at this point how much exactly he had been drinking that night. He could have stumbled the wrong direction, gotten lost, felt cold, and decided to take shelter in one of these places. So police are begging everyone who is in the area right now to check everything. And at this point it's been about a month so I'm sure everyone's had the opportunity. The only thing about that is that this is a vacation area. The road he was on for the most part was residence and housing for employees, but it's a very small town. I think there's only a little over 600 actual residents living there and about 900 people own vacation rentals. 
This happened on the early hours of Sunday. Usually switch out for vacation rentals are on Saturdays, so Saturday's a pretty slow day for areas like this. People leave early in the morning, they show up later at night, and normally not many people go out. They just kind of get themselves together, get groceries. So it was kind of an awkward time. I feel like a lot of people vacationing might not have noticed something strange, and unfortunately those same people that were vacationing probably left just a few days after he disappeared. So it's kind of a tough position for everyone to be in. The Canadian search and disaster dog team came out on March 7th and unfortunately they came back with nothing. There have been relentless searches. His parents have been put up in a rental home so that they can stay there until Ryan is found and his dad has woken up every single morning, gone out and searched for his son and nothing has been found. And this is where I find it kind of odd. I have walked the entire length of Burfield Road. I have looked around the area. If he had turned the wrong way out of the house, let's say he was a little bit more intoxicated than you know someone who can easily get home on their own, he could have ended up down basically a dirt road down the side of the mountain essentially. Now he had not been there for very long. I don't know if he had worked previous seasons, but if he had just moved there in December and this was his first season at the resort, he would have only been there for about two months. Now you can get comfortable with an area, but unless you are comfortable with all of the trails and places down the side of the mountain, you can get lost very, very easily. The road itself is in a valley. So if he was walking on the road, it's not like there's just a random cliff he could have fallen off of. It's not that sort of layout or situation. But again, if he made the wrong turn down Burfield Road, it leads straight down just a gravel path along the side of the mountain. And unfortunately, at this time, there was a lot of heavy snowfall. They came in with thermal cameras, drones, everything. They had search and rescue dogs that are trained to find people on the side of the mountain in the snow. They searched everywhere, but they didn't find him. And I don't know, I've got a very strange feeling about this case because I feel like if he was drunk and stumbled down the wrong way, he probably would not have made it very far. If he did turn the wrong way, he would have noticed fairly quickly he was going the wrong way. Um, he would have been in pitch black on a dirt road surrounded by trees, which wouldn't have looked at all like his walk home from what I've seen. So he wouldn't have made it far. And they've searched so far that I just feel like they would have found him. So I'm worried he either somehow slipped while going down this wrong way, possibly went further than anyone thinks he could have gone. It has snowed a lot since then. He could be buried under the snow. I don't know if they got to the area with thermal cameras fast enough for it to have made a difference, but I feel like if he did somehow hurt himself or go the wrong way and get lost, that's a long time for him to be out in the elements. So. I'm worried, very worried that he might not be found until everything thaws in the spring, which should be in the next few months. Um, but I also, I don't know, I also find it weird because I just don't think he could have gotten that far. I don't know, maybe I'm looking too far into things, but I just... I don't know, I have a weird feeling, so I'm interested to see what happens in this case. I will say that they are constantly looking for volunteers for search efforts, so if you are in the area or close to the area and you want to help them, I have all the links down below. They have an actual website and a Facebook page where you can contact people at, follow up on more information, but if you are in the area, share as much as you can. I don't think this is a situation where he simply just ran away because he wanted to. I think something happened to him. So while sharing might not, you know, necessarily benefit him in any way, you know, you never, you never know. It's better safe than sorry. Ryan is six feet tall with blonde hair, brown eyes, and he was wearing a burgundy ball cap, a blue jacket, dark jeans, and a gray and white shirt. And that was the last thing that he was seen in. Thank you guys so much for helping me name this many mysteries. I really feel so much better now that I'm able to cover these smaller cases that you guys contact me about all the time. I felt like just retweeting 
tweeting them just was not enough. So I want to say thank you guys so much. I'm glad that we are doing something for the smaller cases. You guys know how I feel about smaller cases in general, but these are like smaller cases and it makes my heart so incredibly full and hopefully we can see some of these people come home. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button to become a member of the Helen fam and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.